tell you the demo for this program. Like as and when the uh, our uh, honorable uh, chief guest comes, I request everyone to kindly stand up and uh, invite him. And followed by the national anthem and Tamil Taiwal. It will be just continuous. And I request everyone to be uh, standing. And uh, there will be a lamp lighting ceremony. Then we can all sit. So this is a small change. I request you all to follow this. And even after uh, our honorable chief guest leaves the program, uh, I request you all to be seated for the further program. There is further program there. I request you all to be seated in the auditorium, please. Thank you.
sir. Good morning all. VAP has just arrived. Request all to stand up for the national anthem followed by Tamir Tawai Vadhu and receive him. request our chief guest to light the lamp kuttu vilakku and bless the commemorative program thank you
Thank you, sirs. A warm welcome to all the delegates for the Dr. Naidama birth century commemoration. A special welcome to the family members of Dr. Naidama on this special occasion. Now may I request Dr. R. Jayavel, Dean of Technology, Aragappa College of Technology, Anna University, to welcome the gathering. Thank you. Anayvarakum, Anbanda Kalai Vanakam. A very good morning to all of you. Honorable Chief Guest of this morning, Sri Muppa Varappu Vengaya Naidu Garu, the former Vice President of India, esteemed Vice Chancellor of Anna University, Professor R. Vail Raj, distinguished Director of Vinyan Prakar, Dr. Nakul Paraskar, respected Director CLRI, Dr. K. J. Sri Ram, President of AC Tech Alumni Association, Sir Ilangovan, AC Tech Leather and Footwear Alumni Association President, Sir N. Bengatramana, most respected and beloved Badma Bhusan, Dr. T. Ramasamy, the former Director of, uh, former Secretary DST, who is the backbone of all these developments and program which is happening today. The family members and relatives of Dr. Y. Nayudama, the former deans of CEG, AC Tech, former directors of CLRI, heads of the departments, directors of various centers, members of the faculty from Anna University and other institutions, friends from press and media, and my dear students. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a warm welcome to every one of you for this historic event of birth centenary celebration of one of the visionary leather technologists and an internationally acclaimed researcher, Badmasri Dr. Yalavarti Nayudamma. We, the AC Tech fraternity, are proud and honored that three of the legends who are associated with the AC Tech, Dr. G. S. Lada, Dr. Y. Nayudama, and Dr. G. N. Ramachandran, who have been identified by the government of India among the six notable scientists to celebrate their birth centenary celebrations in 2022. We are delighted to have among us the chief guest the former Vice President of India. Our chief guest is a multifaceted personality with numerous accomplishments. He had as a very long illustrious career as the 13th Vice President of India and the Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Minister for Housing and Urban Poverty Alleviation, Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Minister for Urban Development, Minister for Rural Development. So this shows this richness with which he has expertise across various domains of social development. He served as a member of the Rajya Sabha for three consecutive terms. He was also elected as a member of Andhra Pradesh Legislative Assembly twice. He had occupied several responsible organizational positions, both at state as well as national level. It is a fitting tribute to Dr. Y. Nayudamma that we have such an eminent personality decorating the stage today as the chief guest. On behalf of Anna University, I wholeheartedly welcome you, sir, for this inaugural function. The Vice Chancellor of Anna University, Dr. R. Velraj, is an internationally reputed scientist, an able administrator, a dynamic leader who has been very supportive for all the activities of AC Tech campus. He has already announced that we are going to have the statue of the two legendaries, Dr. G. S. Lada and Dr. Y. Nayaduma at the AC Tech campus. I sincerely welcome our Vice Chancellor for this ceremony. 
um, and celebrations. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Nakul Parasar, the director of Vinyan Prasar, who has been coordinating every moment of this program and also financially supported these two events at Anna University. And we have a team of scientists from Vinyan Prasar. They have been tirelessly working for the past one month to organize this uh, uh, celebration. On behalf of Anna University, I welcome uh, Dr. Nakul Prasar and the team of scientists from Vinyan Prasar for this inaugural function. I welcome the director of CLRI, Dr. K.J. Sriram, who has kindly agreed to pay the tribute to Dr. Y. Nayudamma. And I take this opportunity to welcome the president of ACTA, Alpha, and the distinguished members of uh, alumni of ACTI, and also the family members and relatives of Dr. Y. Nayudamma. I also welcome the principal of CK Nayudu College, Chennai, Dr. P. Murugakutan and many principals of various colleges and chairman of colleges in and around Chennai. The very purpose of organizing this event at this venue is to make the student aware of the extraordinary talent of Dr. Y. Nayudamma in the scientific space and also to know about his great contributions for the industries, society and academia. Badma Bhushan, Dr. T. Ramasamy, whose dedicated involvement and directions has made this program happen today. And he has kindly agreed to give the anatomy of Dr. Y. Nayudama to reach the student community. I welcome you, sir, for this uh, ceremony wholeheartedly. I once again welcome all the industrial icons who have gathered here for this celebration. I once again thank, I mean, welcome all of you for this momentable occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May we request Dr. R. Jaywal to honor the chief guest with Angavastram. <laughs> Likewise, we request Dr. R. Vail Ray Raj Vice Chancellor Anna University to present the memento. I again request Dr. KJ Sriram, Director CSIR CLRI to endeavor token of love to our honorable former Vice President of India. Thank you, sirs. We now request Dr. Nakul Parasha, Director Vigyan Prashar for delivery of centenary commemorative report. Thank you. A very good morning to one and all. Namaskar, uh, honorable and the most beloved leader in this country whom I have seen personally, where hordes and hordes of people have come to listen to him. And this is not too far. This is something that happened on December 22nd, 2021. That is where we started all of this. Anyway, to everybody on the dais and off the dais, and particularly to my guru mentor, Dr. Ramaswamy, uh, a very good morning to one and all, namaskaram. And thank you so much for having organized this and having all of us here. Last year, uh, somewhere around the same time, Dr. Ramaswamy uh, came up with an idea of celebrating selected, not selected, centenary uh, scientists who have done a great for this country. Not only scientists, but technocrats as well. And in this list, he picked up, he got six of them and we sat down and we discussed about it. And amongst them, Dr. Nayaduma was one of them. And we thought we'll 
start a program with the blessings of no, no, nobody other than our beloved leader and also at that point in time our honorable vice president of the country Sri Venkaya Naidu Garuji for uh, you know starting this program sir with your blessings we have come a long way and I think anything that you've started the Midas touch that you have goes on and on and that is why I feel very touched uh, and very honored to tell you sir that the first time when I came and met you in your office, um, the kind of aura and love that you had and the kind of blessings that you gave to all of us to get started gave us that so much of empowerment and made us so emboldened that we have now taken up this journey. And 2023, fortunately, we have 23 scientists that have been identified for the centenary celebrations. We'll again go on 22nd December for the next year to do this. And I feel very happy that something that you started today becomes the last day for this year's celebration. So in this process, sir, uh, we had brought a book which you had released that day. And we've also had Dr. Lada's uh, centenary celebrations in August when we released another book. And we'll have much more of this doing. But the journey doesn't end here because in our latest meeting of uh, 12th September in Ahmedabad when the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji spoke about, he says more important than whatever that we do in science and technology. For science communication, which is very important, it becomes very important to remember our scientists who have done a lot for the country. And this is just not what work they have done, but the their lives are very important for us to emulate. And for youngsters sitting out here that I see, it makes much importance for us to know more about them. I think we're all syncing up, we're all converging to the same idea of taking these centenarians to the masses, to the people, and in the way that can be possible. Print, electronic, social, digital, all possible formats that are available will use them. And for that matter, it gives me an immense uh, pleasure to share the vision of Dr. T. Ramaswamy for having brought not only books, but also series of films that we have produced. IndiaScience.in, something that I would like to invoke again from this platform. Before you leave this place, please download. It's an um, app which, has, which is the only OTT channel of the country which talks about science and technology content all free for you to download repurpose. And in that you will find there are a number of such stories and 23 films that we have planned for the next year will feature on this. So having said this, books, TV, radio, all possible media, our, com our centenarian uh, celebrations will also run past many other programs. We'll have series of lectures, We'll have series of poetry recitals, which we call as Kavi Samelan in Hindi. We'll have similar programs in different forms and different genre all throughout the year. So once again, I would like to conclude by saying that, sir, with your blessings and the kind of vision that you've led, you've given us, we have come to a point where this goes on and on. We seek your blessings for the, such organizations like Vigyan Prasad and others that have been doing uh, relentlessly for science, communication, popularization, and its extension in the country. This will be a 33rd year of Vigyan Prasad's existence, and we wish, with your blessings, we take it forward and make it big. Thank you so much. Jai Hind and Jai Bharat. Thank you, sir. A report, though concise, reveals re real commitment to the cause. Now, now we invite Dr. K.J. Sriram, Director, CSIR, CLRI, to pay his tribute to Dr. Naidama. Honorable Sri Vengai Naiduji, the Vice Chancellor, my mentor, Dr. Ramsamy, colleagues of the Vigyan Prasar, teachers, fellow alumnus. First, 
I thank the Dean of the AC Tech for inviting me to this occasion. I must say that I am genuinely a misfit to this program as I have not had any direct contact with Dr. Naidama. I learned about Dr. Naidama only in 1992, which is good eight years after his untimely death. Nevertheless, I saw the bust of Naidama on the leading way to the first floor of the main building of CLRI. So, if you are in the main building of the Central Leather Research Institute, you can never miss the bust of Naidama. In the fourth semester of BTEC Leather program, we started coming to CLRI for the introductory course on leather technology by Dr. Ramsamy. And we started seeing the bust on a daily basis. Dr. Ramsamy's classes were like telling the story of leather. And when somebody tells the story of leather, they cannot miss the story of Dr. Naidama. Today, if I or my juniors who have been become scientists of CLRI are asked about Dr. Naidama, we would echo what we have heard from Dr. Ramsamy and others. Last year, we kick-started the celebrations of 100 years of Dr. Naidama. Dr. Ramasamy, known for putting up people in challenging situations, asked me to make a presentation for about 30 minutes about Dr. Naidama, seen through a third-generation director. I would have read about 10 to 15 books written about him or written by him, which was my genuine learning about Dr. Naidama. In CLRI, he sowed the seeds for the future directors to reap. In the four minutes given to me today, I can only echo the words of Dr. R. Venkatraman, the former president of India, and I quote, it is difficult to think or write of Professor Naidama in the past tense. As, the, as with any essential men of science, the past was to him a point of reference. It was the present that he bent his energies and on the future that he focused his gaze." Unquote. He seems to have asked the question, the cobbler sitting under the tree opposite to the Leather Institute has no schooling, no capital, no complicated tools or technology. He lives only on his skills and experience. Whether, whether as with a B.Tech degree, after 16 years of schooling, my students run around the world for employment. Where have we gone wrong with our education system? My colleagues and I pondered this question at the Department of Leather Technology of the Anna University. In April this year, we celebrated the 75th year of leather technology in Anna University. And in that, we also celebrated the Academy Research Industry Partnership that was created way back in 1945 itself. The very fact that I am here is in itself because of this partnership. To give an example from the academy and industry connect that he established, we just concluded a collagen symposium celebrating the 100 years of Professor G. N. Ramachandran, who gave us the collagen structure and the Ramachandran plot. The reminiscence of his students, co-workers, and the Nobel laureates like Venki Ramakrishnan highlighted how Dr. Naidama and CLRI facilitated his collagen structures research. On the industry side, a couple of weeks back, we had at CLRI the Honorable Minister for Education, Government of India. He emphasized the need to support the cottage and small industries, which was Dr. Naidama's uh, very stressful initiative at the Institute. Dr. Naidama firmly believed in and initiated research on biomaterials, inorganic and organic chemistry, and polymer science. Today, CLRI is a pioneer in collagen biomaterial research with products such as sutures and wound healing and burn dressing materials in the market. His idea of translational research is today vibrantly taken up by the CSIR. We continue in his philosophy, which I quote, it is not enough to conduct research and to develop the know-how. It is necessary to sell research. And the best way to sell research is to say, you take the profits, we will take the losses. We continue to talk in the same tone as he had spoken decades ago. The achievements of CLRI are expressed not, in non, not only in terms of increased leather exports, but also on the impact of change this industry has made in the lives of the underprivileged. Today, I can proudly say that the industry and the technocrats have gone much higher than the institution and the researchers. This is precisely what Dr. Naidama wanted. 
I must on this occasion thank the sculptor who made the bust of Dr. Naidam. Since 2019, November 28, as I walk up the stairs of the main building of CLRI towards my office, I, it looks to me as though Dr. Naidama keeps asking you, are you taking care, good care of the Naidama Institute and the industry? CLRI celebrated the 100th birthday on 10th September. On that day, we resolved to take the legacy of Naidama forward. Today, I have a request to my friends in the industry, the alumnus who, d who have wonderfully organized this function. Dr. Naidama, in one of his articles, has dwelt upon whether there is a need for the leather industry in India to transit from traditional to modern. According to him, a transition would mean that the traditional inbuilt skills have, uh, would be lost. To avoid that, he suggested that the traditional artisans should be coupled with modern management and marketing methods that the alumnus of the Department of Leather Technology would have acquired. CLRI wishes to move forward on his thoughts to set up a cooperative approach of cottage, small and larger sectors with one acting as a feeder unit to the other. The best way that you all can remember and continue the legacy of Dr. Naidama is to invest your corporate social responsibility funds in establishing centers that can have designers, master cutters, quality control staff, etc., who can help the cottage industry make products that are consumer desired. Many of you can be the aggregators and take the products of the cottage industry to the international consumers. Friends, by this process, we would be in a position to keep the legacy of Dr. Naidama alive for the next 100 years as well. Let the legacy of Dr. Naidama fly high through all of us. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you, Dr. K.J. Sriram. You have cherished the memories of centenarian. We now invite Dr. R. Velraj, Vice Chancellor, Anna University, for his felicitation address. Respected, honorable, former Vice President of this country, Sri Vengaya Naiduji, all family members and stakeholders of CLRI and the AC Tech, family members of Naidu Amma, and uh, officers from Vigyar Prasad, good morning to all. This is a very good occasion. We are celebrating the birth centenary of a great scientist who served for this country in various ways through this leather sector. This kind of celebration definitely will motivate the youngsters to do more than what they can as of now that they are doing. His hard work should be appreciated by all the scientists now. That is why this our government has initiated such events during this 75th year of independence while celebrating this Asadika Amrit Mahotsav. Lot of people who struggled for our independence were also celebrated during their birthdays this year. The same way, the lot of scientists who contributed a lot to this country are being celebrated during their 100th birth year. I, I thank our uh, Professor Dr. Ramaswamy's initiative, who is the major person who made this kind of event to happen, and also many people through Vigyar Prasad had initiated such a beautiful event. On this occasion, to the young students, I would like to tell few things how he contributed for the sustainable development of this 
leather sector through CLRA and all other organizations wherever he worked. I think all the students of AC Tech must be knowing after his studies in leather technology, he was in UK, USA for his higher studies, for his higher studies. Then he returned and joined in CLRI. At the young age itself, he became the assistant director of CLRI. Unfortunately, during his tenure as assistant director, the director of the CLRI passed away and he was holding the responsibility of director in charge of CLRI. When our former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, that time Prime Minister involved in appointment of all these central institutes, he directly interviewed our great leader Noida Ma and he asked one question, what was your vision to develop? Late night this interview happened with the Prime Minister. And he told, and what is his response? I will endeavor to infuse scientific temper to the tradition bound leather industry being pursued by the socially and economically downtrodden leather artisans and help in their social economic uplift. Our former Prime Minister was impressed with that reply and he, he was confirmed as the director. Very young age, he became the director of this institute and he contributed a lot. I'm sure many of the stakeholders, these industrial people who are successful at present and also many scientists who are successful in, in this field as scientists as well administrators, all because of his initial effort through CLRA. So that must be appreciated. And uh, when during his tenure, he tried to bring all the, because to induce all the people from the leather industry to own this uh, research organization as their home, then only this attachment will come. He made this bond in a beautiful way. He tried to involve in all the leather industries, peoples, their family functions, and they started inviting him to their family function. Thus, he created a very good industry institute interaction those days. Even now, we are not able to connect this, but he has created that industry institute interaction long back. And in other fields, he still we are finding it difficult to create such a beautiful industry institute interaction. And he never goes behind any position. For one example, he was given vice chancellor position in JNU. Okay, that time the first day one incident happened when he joined as vice chancellor in JNU. There was a strike, 55 days long strike was going on. But the first day when he joined, he discussed with all those people hours together and the same day this strike was called off. The first day when he joined as uh, vice chancellor. But after he completed 18 or 16 months of his tenure, he found a lot of hard level bureaucracies there. He could not implement. He immediately resigned and he didn't go want that job. He resigned and within 16 months, he resigned that job because of a lot of bureaucracy. So, th so he made a lot of system in the leather sector and because of his effort, lot of women employees started coming in the sector. Now, in the leather sector, 30% of the people working are women. This is because of his initial effort. So, women empowerment also, this SDG goal 5 that he implemented long back. Because of his effort, now 30% of the women employees are there in the leather sector. Thousands of years ago, we had great scientists like Arya Bhatt, Brahmagupta, Bhaskaracharya, Sushruta, pa Padanjali, and many more, who made pioneering contribution to various fields of knowledge, importing tradition for people's welfare. We Indians forgot these traditions when we were ruled by other foreigners, 
nations. Now time has come India to become Vishwaguru by carrying all its traditions, whatever we missed in this past. At this juncture, as our uh, Dean AC Tech pointed out, we want to, our students should know who is he. So we want to make a statue in the AC Tech campus within a few, few months that will be, that uh, statue will be there in the AC Tech campus, not only for him and G.S. Lada, who also made a lot of contribution through chemical field. These two, and these two scientists' name, scholarship also will be instituted for PhD and postdoctoral. One, in the name of uh, uh, Dr. G.S. Lada, PhD scholarship, and in the name of Noidama, postdoctoral fellowships will be instituted. So that I want to make it as an announcement. This, all students should get motivated by such an eminent scientist, and also you should contribute a lot to our country in the coming days. I once again, Congratulate and appreciate all the efforts taken by our professors, scientists who helped Dr. Ramaswamy to make this event to happen. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the felicitation address. We now invite Sri A. Ilangovan, President ACTEC Alumni Association, for announcement of awards initiated by Alpha and Acta for the birth centenary commemoration of Dr. Naidoma. Good morning to one and all. <clears throat> Respected Chief Guest, Sri Venkaya Nadu, former President of, Vice President of uh, India, uh, beloved Vice Chancellor, Dr. Velraj, our friend and the supporter, <coughs> Dr. Nakul Pashar, Pashar from <coughs> Delhi, who has been always been supporting us. Our Dean Velraj, <coughs> our Dean and professors, and uh, our fellow alumni and students. Today we are proud to be celebrating one of the greatest scientists from this AC Tech campus, Dr. Y. Nayadamam. This not only brings the knowledge about what is his contribution to the scientific world and to the community, but also it brings the inspiration to all of our students and faculties in making them bring out their own best and their excellence. We are proud to be <coughs> releasing a commemorative booklet on Dr. Naidama today by our Honorable Chief Guest today. And we are also dedicate ourselves to these legends by instituting special awards annual awards in their name. The first two awards are from AC Tech Alumni Association. Dr. G.S. Lada Research Award. This is for the best uh, PhD thesis in this entire campus. The next award <coughs> is for Dr. Naidama's Research Innovation Award. This is also across the entire campus. These two awards will be awarded by the AC Tech Alumni Association. The third award, the special award by the Alpha, the Leather Technology Association. This is on Naidama's prize money for best innovative design in footwear. So these awards bring out the enthusiasm among the students and faculties to bring out the excellence in our own students so that they compete and, bring <coughs> and f be a role model for the society. 
Apart from this, <laughs> ACTEC Alumni Association is also in the process of forming a foundation called ACTEC Research Foundation, a Section 8 company, which will be launched soon. This foundation will focus in the outlines of the recommendations given by <coughs> our uh, uh, recommendation by the expert committee headed by Professor Ramasamy, Red Act, research, <coughs> research uh, <coughs> innovation development in ACTEC. So these awards will be given in the annual celebration of the ACTEC every year. And uh, they will be given along with the uh, Distinguished Alumni Awards, which is already in place on an annual basis. We are thankful to all the people who have worked hard for the last few years in bringing these association activities to this level. And we are hopeful that <coughs> we will be reaching our dream of making AC Tech a center of excellence soon and make all of us proud to be, <coughs> to be part of this institution built by noble legends like Dr. Ligia Slada and Dr. Nayadama. And we are very thankful to our chief guest for gracing this occasion. We really missed him during our uh, 75th year anniversary, but we are happy to have him on our 75th year, and really thank you for that, sir. And as our Dr. Nagul Prashad has mentioned, whatever he touches never stops. We hope that whatever we are starting today will never stop and grow. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The awards are source of motivation, instilling passion among the younger generation. On this memorable occasion, AC Tech Alumni Association and AC Tech Al uh, uh, Leather and Footwear Alumni Association, in association with Vigyan Prashar, has brought out a commemorative publication. This includes hom homage of four generations of his students. We request our honorable former Vice President of India to release the publication entitled Dr. Y. Naidoma, a timeless inspirator. Sir, we request you to unveil the bro brochure Dr. G.S. Ladda Research Prize, Dr. Noidama Innovation Prize, and Dr. Noidama Footwear Design Innovation Prize. Sir, now we want your address. Ramaswamigaru, former Secretary, Science and 
technology government of india who is instrumental in organizing this program and also responsible for inviting me to this prestigious program along with others dr vel raj garu dr kg sri raman dr n parashar dr r j velu sri venkatramana sri rangovan family members and followers of dr nayadamu garu the teachers who are working in this institutes both institutes and also students friends brothers and sisters i really feel very happy to be present here today at miss you all to participate in this function it's a very noble initiative taken up by the alumni of the ac college of technology and the association of leather and footwear alumni along with vigyan prasar coming together to organize this event i recall that last december i had inaugurated the centenary celebrations of six indian scientists four of whom had incidentally worked at chennai when i received a proposal for the commemoration event concerning dr nayadamu garu i felt very happy because to me it typifies what one can achieve through grit and determination dr nayadamu hailed from a small village near tenali gundu district of andhra pradesh which was not even connected by a motorized motorable road at the time he studied in local and provincial schools through sheer hard work he rose to dg heights as a scientific leader in the country and also earned global reputation and recognition dr naidamma's life holds a message for youth in general and rural youth in particular when i was young his name was widely known to many of us in a sense he was a role model for many people of my generation dr nayadamu garu belongs to the rarest of rare categories of men whose work is celebrated widely and has been an inspiration to succeeding generations of scientists dr nayadamu garu was a man with a vision and he took it up as a mission along with the passion for the sake of nation <laughs> without doing any omission or giving any remission or expecting any commission he carried this mission for the sake of the nation we need such people we need to celebrate their life we need to celebrate their contribution this is to give inspiration to the younger generation is he said famously and i quote education should promote a new type of relationship between individual and society help collective promotion of society as a whole instead of creating a privileged few that get estranged and alienated from people unquote what a beautiful statement at the time dr nayadam garu had a cementing character which transcended regions caste and creed the commemorative volume released today is a reflection of 
డాక్టర్ నాయుడమ్మ గారు పర్సనాలిటీ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ మెసేజెస్ ఫీచర్ ఆర్టికల్స్ ట్రిబ్యూట్స్ హోమేజెస్ అండ్ అనెక్డోట్స్ ఫ్రమ్ ఎ వ్యాస్ట్ బాడీ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ స్పానింగ్ ఫైవ్ జనరేషన్స్ స్టార్టింగ్ విత్ ఈజ్ ఓన్ కాంటెంపరీస్ లైక్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ద గ్రేట్ ఎంఎస్ స్వామినాథన్ టు కరెంట్ డే స్టూడెంట్స్ ఇట్ ద అండర్ గ్రాడ్యుయేట్ లెవెల్ ఇన్ లెదర్ టెక్నాలజీ సచ్ ఈస్ ద రీచ్ అండ్ రిలవెన్స్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఐకానిక్ సైంటిస్ట్ ఐ థింక్ సైంటిస్ట్ హూ పర్స్యూ ది అక్విషన్ ఆఫ్ నాలెడ్జ్ సీకింగ్ టు అప్లై ది ఫ్రూట్స్ ఆఫ్ దియర్ లెర్నింగ్ ఫర్ ద బెనిఫిట్ ఆఫ్ సొసైటీ ఆర్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ రేర్ ఐ హ్యావ్ నో హెజిటేషన్ ఇన్ అజర్టింగ్ దట్ నాయుడమ్మ గారు వాజ్ అమాంగ్ ది సెలెక్ట్ ఫ్యూ let us take the example of indian leather sector to illustrate a point just touch the pawn when dr naidam gar returned to india and joined the clri in 51 where the 50000 people could make their livelihood from this sector it was a livelihood activity mainly for people living on margins of society today this sector employs about 45 lakh people and is sustainable industrial activity with an annual turnover of about rupees 80000 crores it contributes to social justice through women's employment and empowerment of weaker sections in this transition the life and contributions of dr naidamma are strongly interwoven he was an institution builder and a team leader with a focus of knowledge for society he carried this vast experience with him when he took over as the director general of csir tributes from different director generals of csir starting from air mashelka to the immediate past dg dr shekhar mande bring out the strong social contact of a man to the arm of science and technology my dear sisters and brothers dr naidam gar was a scientist with a global perspective he was the founder chairman of the committee on science and technology for developing societies costed an international body with headquarters in chennai that he was able to connect as many as 56 nations through coasted during a short span speaks volume about his far reaching influence it would it would be apt to say that as a scientist pro poor agenda was his cultural dna nowadays we see everybody talks about pro poor after making them so poor all these years he was a spokesman for deploying technology to bridge divides as a means of promoting global, global peace because we are a peaceful nation we love peace because peace is the progress is the prerogative of pro, for progress prerequisite if you don't have peace you cannot progress you do not pay attention you cannot have the retention and if you suffer with the attention then you will become impatient later you have to become impatient also so that way peace is very very useful peace is powerful weapon we have the great example of mahatma gandhi through peaceful methods he took us forward for the independence struggle of course there are people like uh, great subhash chandra bose bhagat singh rajguru sukhdev in their own they, they have tried for the attainment of freedom but peace is a prerequisite for progress let all of us work together to build world peace because india we are an ancient nation we are a great civilization 
we always believed in sarve jana sukhino bhavantu vasudaika kutumbakam share and care is the core of indian philosophy share and care this is what naidamma at that time the great man has shown and worked for the progress of the world the scientists should take look to orient science towards the needs of society towards the needs of society that is more important and aim to be futuristic in an increasingly globalized world in the last 75 years we have made impressive strides successive governments undoubtedly but we still have challenges 20% of the people are illiterate 20 or 18% are below poverty line even after 75 years of independence this is a challenge there are areas of inequality among the social groups which is very bad there is a discrimination on the basis of gender women they should be given equal participation in every sector of the society i'm happy it was told 30% are women but we need more and more women to join the every walk of public life they should be given enough opportunity women also have strength they have knowledge they are more peaceful so they are attentive and they can make good progress provided if you give them an opportunity this should be remembered by one and all and we must encourage women our scientists and researchers are steadily enhancing india's position in global scientific research but we must work work move on this has to be understood by one and all we need to walk the extra mile to achieve more one way of doing this is to enhance the quality of our research this is very important whenever we talk about state of science in the country the issue of the investment on a percentage of gdp r and d invariably comes up for discussion it must be said in this context that the investment by industries in r and d is lower than it ought to be so i call upon the industry please invest in research that really helps the future of the country it will also help your own future and your children's future the industry and scientific institutions must come more closer the industry must boost more funding and it will improve both quality and innovation my dear friends as we are talking about a great scientist a few words about science science is the lifeline of human progress it is a lifeline of human progress and it is the key for improving quality of human lives not only progress quality the ultimate aim according to my own understanding little understanding is aim of research and science is to make people's life comfortable more than that underline people more happy happiness is the index it should be the index people should live in happiness happiness if they get an opportunity to work if they get encouragement if they get the skills if they get the knowledge and if they move forward they will be happy they will not be happy by the temporary populistic doles temporary happy up to the evening till they go to the shop that shop i need not explain yes upliftment of the poorest of the poor should be our aim this is what pandit din dal upadhyay said dr ambedkar said even mahatma gandhi said taking care of the down trodden taking care of the last man not the last one in this auditorium but the last man in the society 
That should be our priority. It's called as Antyodaya. This is what Nayadamma's vision, those days, uplifting the poorest of the poor. See the leather industry, how it was looked down once upon a time, and how it is now respectable. I come from a village. I know the village life. I know the cobblers and others who were discriminated and were not treated properly. But today, it's an honorable profession. What honorable profession? Because it also generates wealth. Gives more comfort. What's and what is required, I call upon the people who are working in industry and also research. One should remember, it should be one, two aspects are there. This, is, this applies to all, including uh, the interior designers and also the architects and also the other people. What is required? I recently went to a house and then I saw the tap. I opened the tap, the water was falling on me rather than falling on this. Then I said, Kai, what is this? Kisne banaya, unko bula. They called one lady. I told her, you understand Telugu? She said, I understand Telugu. Though she's a Marathi, she understands Telugu. And I asked her, what is this? So she said, sir, this is the fashion. Shallow or hello. Fashion. And then there were 30 lights in a room. One room, those days, we used to have one light. And it used to give more light. Now 30 lights do not give enough light. Then you have to have a reading light or a bed light or a torch light. What is happening? So I told her in Telugu, I think people understand also, Ma, what is important? Saundaryama, Saukaryama. Saundaryama, beauty. Saukaryama, comfort. The comfort and the beauty should be interwoven. I do agree. Now it is marketing. It is packaging. Package. And inside what is there, that's a different matter. Package. <laughs> we should combine these two. The researchers must focus on this. Everybody will not be satisfied like me because I come from a different generation and I also feel old is gold. But people like gold, but they don't want gold. They are ready to go for even a road gold. But fashion. So fashion and comfort should be combined together. The science is all about the spirit of rational inquiry that can guide us in our lives. We must always question, question, question. This is even recognized by our constitution, which identifies the development of scientific temper as one of our fundamental duties. Duties, not rights. If we imbibe this temper, we can apply scientific methodology to every endeavor of life, make informed decisions. So you apply, then you'll get reply and also have enough supply if you apply scientific temper. The pandemic has re reinforced the importance of scientific temper in our lives, Corona. Even in the field of science, India's core philosophy has always been share and care. Our decim decimal systems were borrowed by Arab traders, which later spread to medieval Europe. It is the, in the same spirit that we have not only become the pharmaceutical hub of the world, but we have been extensively sharing these life-saving drugs with the rest of the developing world. We believe, as I told you, the concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one big family. That is perhaps why the great botanist, physicist, the father of radio science, J.C. Bose, never 
filed a single patent despite the many inventions and discoveries he made. Science lays the path to progress and create material wealth for the country. So let us develop scientific temper. That is one way of paying tribute to these great sons of this great country. My, and it will also address various challenges. So we must encourage science. We must encourage technology. Of course, we should never forget or ignore history. History also is equally important. It gives you inspiration. So let us combine all this together. I compliment the Central Leather Research Institute, Anna University. I had an occasion to visit that university, address the staff and students, Alagappa College of Technology, and the AC Tech Aluminum Association, the Association of Leather and Footwear, and Vignan Prasar for organizing this event in commemoration of birth centenary of Dr. Nayada Mugaru. Fr friends, once again, I would like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity and providing me this patient hearing. Nandri Wanakam. Thank you, sir. We are very grateful for your blessings and your scintillating talk. As inspired from our honorable former Vice President of India, may I call upon Mr. N. Venkat Ramana, President Alpha, for his word of thanks. Vanakkam, it is my honor to propose a word of thanks. This has been a memorable and heartwarming event. On behalf of Anna University, CSIR, CSIR, CLRI, Vignan Prasar, and all the organizers, I express our heartfelt gratitude to our honorable chief guest, former Vice President of India, for his time and blessings. Sir, your address has been motivating and stimulating. Dr. Vaina Adama has been the cement who connected Anna University, CSAR, CLRI, Vignan Prasar, and all our alumni bodies. Dean of AC Tech and Vice Chancellor of Anna University have been a great help. And thanks to both of them and through them, thanks to the entire university. We treat CSIR, CLRA as our alma mater. Thanks to the director of CL CSIR, CLRA, and through him, the entire institution. ACTA has been a strong partner to Alpha. I acknowledge the value of partnership between the two bodies. Thanks to Sri Ilangovan for his leadership, and through him, the entire AC Tech alumni fraternity. Thanks to Vignan Prasar for their contribution both intellectual and financial, thanks to the various sponsors. Our students are the architects of new and emerging India, and I thank for them for their participation. Thanks to the media and press and the entire crew of Anna University who made this event memorable and successful. Namaste. Thank you, sir. May I request you all to please rise for the national anthem. Janagana manadi daayak jayahe 
भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराता द्राविड उत्कल बंगा बिंद्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलति तरंगा तब शुभ नामे जाहे तब शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे कवच यहाता जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत वाक्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे May I request the audience be kindly seated. May I request the audience be kindly seated. Uh, now, Dr. Nayaduma Science and Technology Foundation would be presenting their activities. So I request the audience to be seated, please. Now, may I request uh, Sri Raghunanda Babu, Chairman, Nayadama Science and Technology Foundation, to address, uh, uh, to uh, deliver his speech about the, his activities. He's gone out. Did you see him off? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Raghunanda Babu has gone out to see the VP, VAP off for a few minutes. He'll be back in a few minutes. Friends, we had a 
wonderful program in the commemoration of uh, uh, our mentor, teacher, and inspiring leader, Dr. Nairama. There is a research foundation, Nairama Science Foundation, established many years ago. And the foundation has been very active in, in celebrating various activities of the spirit of Dr. Nairama. I have here with me Mr. Raghunath Babu, who is the chairman of the Tobacco Board and also president of this Narama Science Foundation. This is a very active foundation because their location, the foundation, is close to where Narama is physically born and uh, near Tenali. I am going to request my very dear friend. Sagnada Babu, to tell you about what this activities of the foundation is doing. After that, because several of you are here, I have to introduce myself as our alumni of this college. And I studied here myself. And I'm going to share with you five selected anecdotes, a story format with Nadama himself. Then you'll recognize how great Nadama was, how stupid I was as a student. And I'm going to request Babu to share with you about this foundational activities. Dear, dear friends, I thank Padma Bhushan, Ramaswamy, and all of you for giving me a small opportunity, this opportunity to give a presentation about what our foundation, this <laughs> the Naidama, Elvarthi Naidama Science and Technology Foundation, set up at uh, our, his native district, that is Guntur of Andhra Pradesh. For the last five years also, we are continuing his awards function, but for a break of one year during first COVID but for that. Anyway, this being the centenary year, we have done various activities, activities, especially to inspire this generation of students how to bring, how to come up in their life, that too, without any much of background as well, any facilities also. How Naidama has become an international personality. Not only that, but also how he has helped the science and technology of our modern India. Today, as our chief guest also has made a mention, that uh, this industry, uh, the, the tremendous, phenomenal growth of this industry is 100% attributed, definitely, but for Naidama's vision and his initiation. Many other persons, personalities have carried his uh, vision, but uh, he was the pioneer founder. So to make this generation remember him, we have done various activities like uh, naming blocks or auditoriums or of in the name of Dr. Naidama, in various prestigious uh, educational institutions. Then making these, uh, making his uh, life history in the textbook also, to, we are making our effort to do that. And we are conducting the so, uh, competitive exams and all, so that Students, boy, students read his life history to get inspiration. And, and uh, we visited both uh, a scientist from CLRI also have come, have come visited and uh, uh, both his school where he studied as well as his native village house where he was born. And not only that, to do, they, tried, they are trying to do something for the upliftment of that village. 
And similarly, we want to, very importantly, we want to set up a, a science, science center, science center in the in his native district that is Guntur, where the where the new technologies, new developments in science are are made available to each and every, especially rural folk of the students, so that uh, they also will be able to catch up to this. So, like we are continuing conducting many activities. We will do it. Uh, it is all number one to for this uh, ma making this science, uh, the uh, changing uh, changing science to be beneficial to the public and especially the new generation and however our country we are very happy that now we, we ours is one of the fastest developing countries not only in economically but also in science and technology so without science and technology economic development also is not possible so to propel this development we are doing whatever small might that we we can do and in this endeavor this uh, the uh, one alavarthi is pavan kumar he is there with me and, uh, and some other uh, 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 donors and persons are there behind our foundation we are uh, doing whatever might we thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to present thank you very much Thank you, sir, and is really truly invoking the minds of all, your speech. I take the pleasure of inviting Padma Bhushan Dr. T. Ramasamy, former Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, in sharing anecdotes of Dr. Naidama. Good afternoon to all of you. I am really a space filler between the program and the lunch. I am uh, very conscious of the fact that lunch is preferable to my talk. But what I am going to do is to share with you true life stories and anecdotes with Dr. Naidamba, essentially to reveal to you a personality that is never written about. We can't write them about. My first class as a student of leather technology, third year, I, we go to the class, and he will always want to teach that particular course, introduction to leather technology. First course in leather technology, always taught by Dr. Naidama. It'll be 8.30 in the morning. And uh, those days, we used to get one hour of bus on this road remember what kind of good days it used to be. And uh, in the class at 8.30, I had to leave home at 7.30, you'll reach at 7.45. So we came here at 7.45, so five people in the class. And Dr. Nadam, I went and invited Sir, that we are classes ready. So he came at, came exactly at 8.30. The first question he asked, how many people in the class? Ten. What happened to others? When such a question happens, no student will answer. Because we can't, we kept quiet. Then he said, well, I can't teach to 50% of the class. So this class is canceled, we'll meet next week. And you'll come in white uh, dress, white pant, white shirt with red tie. And it was a leaving posture. I put up my hand. He said, yes. He said, sir, my parents have sent me here to study. I have a right to study, right to learn. And if you say you're canceling the class, whom are you punishing? People who came to the class or people who didn't come to the class? By, you asked a class at 7, 8.30, I left home at 7.30, reached here at 7.45, but next bell ring me at 8.45. And you're canceling the class. What do I do between now and the next class? 
And I said, even minority of one in the class, I demand that I am taught. I have to stop there. Then I said, if you cancel this class, I cannot respect you. Because the people who didn't come to the class as students, and the teacher who canceled the class, both have failed in their duties. And I cannot respect the person who failed in a duty. This is my first encounter with Dr. Nayadamma as a first student. Okay? Believe me, he did not do anything. He stood back and taught the class. That is the greatness of that individual, which this anecdote communicates to you something. Some, somebody 16 year old, upstart, gives you this kind of comment. Many of us will get upset. Here is a man who allows not to curb that well-meaning irreverence. The well-meaning irreverence is a fundamental part of research and training. And that he did not curb. And I would say, the statement that I said I have a right to study, and I had come here to learn, he accepted as a truth. And that triggers tremendous courage to accept truth, face truth. I'll present that as my first encounter with Dr. Nadama as a B.Tech student of third B.Tech in uh, the technology course. Fourth year, finished it. Fourth year and finally they used to go for the educational tour those days. I was in no mood to go for educational tour. My seniors wanted to go to educational tour to, in leather technology to Kashmir. I understand Kashmir. Then I said, I'm, I asked my the association president, whomsoever, hey, where is the tunnel in Kashmir? What are you going to see in Kashmir? You are going for sightseeing. I am not coming. So they couldn't convince me. When nobody could convince, the usual thing they do is to go back and tell Dr. Nairama that Ramasamy is doing this. So Dr. Nairama called me to, the, to his office. I said, I went. I believe you are not uh, cooperative. I said, in what way, sir? And the, the students, students are by fourth year and finally students are trying to go on an educational tour and you are refusing to go? So they are not going to educational tour. What do you mean educational tour? Sir, they are going sightseeing tour. They are going to Kashmir. Where is the tunnel in Kashmir? They told us, don't go to Pallavaram to see what is happening here. I am not going to go. He said, no, education is not only about what you see in the tanneries and the uh, laboratories. You have to learn life. And you can learn a lot of things in Kashmir. So education is a lifelong process. And this will go on for a long time. The education that I'm now going through, my parents are paying for. If the education tool that they want me to go to Kashmir for can wait. Because my parents will pay for the trip. Therefore, I am not going to go. Like that I said, all right, don't worry about it. I'll pay for your uh, trip. I got mad. I got mad. I said, who are you to play for my trip? You're, com you're compromising my father's self-esteem. And I don't want your money. It's out of the question. I will not go and I shall not go. Madam, I got mad. You're a sore thumb. Yeah, I'm a thumb, but you made it sore. I refused. The educational tour was cancelled. Two days later, he was very angry with me. Two days later, I was working something in Tannery, in the Pallet Tannery. He was alone. He comes, puts his hand on my shoulders, look back. He says, hey boy, I'm sorry. I wish you are my son. This means something tremendous. A leader who was so powerful, so, I mean, very celebrated, comes and tells some 19-year-old, I'm sorry. Courage to apologize is something that doesn't happen, especially those who in power. His truly humility is reflected in this event. Then I went to England, got, I left leather. He didn't like me to leave leather. He tried his best to keep me in leather. That's a different issue. I won't discuss that. I went and got a PhD in organic chemistry. 
When I was in England, he wrote a letter that he wanted to see me to give me a job in this country. I did not apply, did not go. When I landed here on 6.30, 6.40 in the morning, after my PhD from England, and by weapons, he was a DGCSAR and he had come to CLRA on that day. So I go and meet him at around uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Ramasamiya, come here. Yes, sir. When are you going back? Sir, I have not decided to go back unless Mother India throws me out. I want to come here to live. I come here to work. Oh, join CLRA. You and CLRA are inseparable. DG says, sir, it's 8 in the morning. 9.45 in the morning, I was appointed the scientist of Central Institute without an application. <laughs> I repeat, without an application. I was appointed full time. Dr. Nanama got me appointed. That was not the favor to Ramasamy as a DGCSR. He invested into the people whom he thought were appropriate and relevant. And I can tell stories of this. This book carries an article from Dr. Nam Meshelkar. Dr. Meshelkar, in his anecdotal story, he writes, uh, the uh, I'll read out, because it's a fairly important story. Dr. Nairama welcomed me with a hum, warm handshake. My first impression was that of a tall personality and the towering presence and affectionate smile. I was nervous. You're talking about Mashelkar being nervous, who made nervous uh, many others later. But he made me feel easy. At a conversation for 45 minutes, I told him about what I heard. It so happened, he, reads, he, read, he writes to the director of uh, uh, NCL in this particular uh, statement. He says, he was appointed as a conversation. There was a remarkable things about his episode of 45 minutes, magical minutes with Dr. Nairama who turned out to be a life-changing for me. This is Dr. R. A. Mashelka, who has uh, uh, been appointed the scientist of NCL based on a one small note written by the, then the director. And he said, he, when NCL director sent a sent note to him, he replied saying, grab him. That, is, that was Dr. Naidama. He had, he had invested into paper. I'm going to tell you something very personal, very, very, sometimes even painful. But there was a truth about this story, but there is a, in this memorable article, we have a separate story called family stories. Family, uh, let me say, expressions. In that family expressions, there is a component which is written by uh, his own daughter, Shanti. And I will probably read slight one or two lines of that, what she has written, because uh, she is here, and uh, I treat her as my sister. Therefore, I will take the liberty of uh, reading out what she has written for reasons that both of us know. I was a scientist of CLRI. He was a DG of the CSIR. Around 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the evening, he comes in his own drive, personal car, stops at the portico, and uh, he walks into my lab. Hey, Ramasamy, what are you doing? I said, okay, sir. Do you have time for dinner? Yes, sir. Two of us. Dr. Nayadama, the DG, the head and the tail, which the scientist B of CLRI. Both of us went out. He was driving his car. We had time now? Yes, sir. We went to Bhajanagar Beach. And we are walking. He said, Hey, boy, you think I'm failure as a father? I said, Yes, sir. How can you make such a statement? You are questioning, you know, you are asking question. No one asks another person I'm a failure as a father. The doubt itself is an indication of your failure. Then he went and told, I did this, I did that. He shared with me the pain of balancing life between family 
and his professional life at the helm of affairs. At the end, I told him, Sir, you are a very tall man, not just physically, intellectually and emotionally. If you included people like us who were your students, as your children, you are a great success. Your teacher can father a student. You are a great success in life. Why do you only limit your family to the three people whom you get from biologically? After that, we went and uh, had lunch in Navayuga. The serving DG CSR had a private meeting with Ramasan. Here is a man who is asking himself introspectively, have I done my duty to my family? Even at the helm of affairs. How many of us do? This volume brings that element of that man that he has balanced his life extremely well. And there is a very nice, very nice uh, statement from Shanti, who is here. Uh, she writes, at home, he was a father, just a father. He found time for us in spite of his busy official schedules. We could go to him any time and he played the coat hanger. I could share my joy, sorrows with him all moments. He was my Google and internet at the time. We saw the world through his eyes and mind. He would write to us from any part of the world that he was visiting, never slipped fishing us on birthdays and festivals. On a personal note, he was a loving father, caring, sharing, generous, source of inspiration and strength, he was both a friend and a guide. I feel lucky and proud that I have a humanist with a large worldview for a father. I, I treasure his letters even today and would need volumes of books for describing him, the words to express my fond memories. He was an extraordinary father and a humanist. And that was Dr. Naidama. Now I'll tell you my own story. I left for whatever reasons. I left this country. I was working in the US. I was doing reasonably well in science. 1983, I had a letter from my aunt that my parents had a heart attack and I was not around. So I decided to come back and take up a job in this country, but not as a scientist. Because I had been, I had given up on Indian science by that time. I decided to go to Indus and work for a job. It so happened, it was 1983. The other institute, neighboring house, was, had some problems. The institute was not at her best. And it turned out that the, then the political leader had very different views. So the, then the DG of the council met me at 4.30 in the morning and asked me to come back to India and joined Central Leather Research Institute. And I told him, look, I am not interested in the job in CSIR. I am not interested in the country in science. Please leave me alone. And the job was offered. But I went and met Dr. Naidama. This is a real touching moment of my life. I wrote around 8.30 in the morning. This is 83. I told him, sir, I want an advice from you. Nutrition is mine. But I'll take my own advice, uh, my, my own decision. But I want an advice. What's that advice? Sir, people are saying the leather institute is not doing well. You know my strength, you know my weaknesses as well. Do you really believe that I have some role for helping this institution at this moment of crisis? If I came back to this organization, if you think, do you really think that I could do anything? He said, Okay, you asked this question, what are you working upon? I told him what I was working upon. Hey, Ramasamy, you are an artistic scientist. You are a scientist in spite of yourself. When you left leather, I was not happy. But now I understand you are in a much different space. A creative artist requires an appreciative and crucially scrutinizing audience. Leather is too small for you. You are working in a much more domain area. And a painter cannot paint what others want him to paint. A singer cannot sing well what others want him to sing. You have to create, express yourself. 
and I believe you are doing well. Before, I suggest you don't come back. You don't come to Sailor. I wish you stopped there. He didn't. He said, this institute is finished. I have to think for them. It's a question of time before the lab gets closed. And I got up. And he asked, yes, what am I going to do? I'm going to come back, sir. That's why. To hear others say what you just said must pain you. But say it yourself. It must kill you. Several years, seven years ago, I told you something. If I meant it then, I have to come back here for your sake. And I did. <coughs> but an extremely rational person. First thing he did when he came back, he brought Dr. Tyagarajan to CLRI as a director of the institution. It is him who re 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 truly transformed that institution. I am very grateful that he is able to participate today. So the institution that we are talking about today is not something that Ram Nayadamma really worked and got his livelihood from. He was a man who was far beyond everything else. He was not just a truly, he was, he was not just a teacher. He was not just a persona. He was not just a leader. And much more, but I would say, Frankly, it was a soul that lit the path. Let us all hope that we share benefit from that light that he is lit. Thank you very much. If any questions? From the students. From the students. Thank you, sir. It's Truly charismatic and inspirational. Thank you. Sir, I kindly request Sri A. Elangovan, President, ACTEC Alumni Association, and Sri N. Venkatramana, President, ACTEC Leather and Footwear Alumni Association, to occupy the seats on the dais and honor our guests. Now I kindly request uh, Sri A. Ilangovan to honor Dr. T. Ramasamy. I request Sri N. Venkatramana to honor Mr. Raghunanda Babu, Chairman Science and Technology Tenali. I thank you. I request Mr. A. Ilangovan to honor Dr. R. Velraj. I request Sri A. Ilangovan again to honor 
डॉक्टर के जे श्रीराम I request Sri N Venkatramana to honor Dr. R Jayavel. So, sorry, uh, Dr. Nakul Parashar. Now I request Sri A. Ilangovan to honor Dr. J. R. Jaiwal. Actually, I am part of this organization and uh, I accept this honor on behalf of all the students of AC Tech. Thank you. I request Sri N. Venkatramana to honor Ms. Shanti and Mr. Arun, daughter and son-in-law of Dr. Y. Naidamma. Sir, Sir, excuse me. Also, I request to honor uh, Ms. Dr. Ajit Yagarajan and family. Hmm? I, I request the president to honor Ms. Yagamai and Mr. Chidambaram, daughter and son-in-law of Nagapachitiyar. I request uh, Sri N. Venkatramana to honor Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram. I request I request Sri A. Ilangovan to honor Mr. Prasad Devi. Uh, and Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram. Thank you. I now invite the August gathering to fraternize and enjoy the delicious lunch. 
students at canteen and guests at alumni center thank you hello at the hostel students at the hostel sorry thank you cg association alumni center